Hello, everybody, and welcome to welcome to this interview with my friend Leonora Curry. Uh, you guys are in for a really special treat. Um, I've I've been I've been looking forward to this. <laughs> what? Has it been eight months? Nine, nine, nine months. Nine, nine months. months. I've been looking forward to this interview, and when when we were sitting there by the side of the pool in Greece, okay. And uh, we were talking about what it would take to, to kind of get started on this journey. Um, the only thing I, the only thing I wanted, I said, I said, just promise me that I can interview you on the other side. And you're like, you're like, absolutely. If we pull this off, uh, <laughs> absolutely. So Leonora is making good on her promise. So absolutely. I thank you in advance for the time you're going to spend. I know that if you're listening to this right now, you're about to, uh, you're about to be amazed. You're about to be inspired. Um, and uh, I know the story is going to touch your heart and uh, hopefully inspire you to break through whatever may be holding you back in your life. We're going to, you know, the focus is really on health and fitness, but I think, I think you might find it transcends a little bit deeper than that too. So, um, Leonora, what's going on? It's, it's been a while since we've spoken. I've been, I've been stalking you online on Facebook. Hello, hello. hello. Progress. Good. You yeah, sent me a pretty maybe. exciting message recently, but, um, why don't you just kind of let folks know how we got to know each other, how we met, and uh, uh, why, we, why we kind of made this deal nine months ago. Okay. Um, we met, obviously, last year in Greece. Um, we were on the um, retreat, and um, there's, what, 120 of us or something there at the, the resort. And as you well know, I had a bit of a mini breakdown, and that I was just so disgusted with myself. I just thought I need to get... I am never going to feel like this again, was how I was feeling at the time. And I was just like, I have to make a change. And you'd obviously been sharing your story, your journey. And we obviously had a good heart to heart chat. And I came home with the determination and the absolute total desire to make a change in my life. And I signed up for the 3X program. And basically, yeah, I've been on the journey. So that, that was what, mid-June last year. And, and as what, of, what was the initial goal that you set? Because you set, you set kind of an ambitious goal. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, the goal, I mean, I'm not there yet, um, but I'm sort of, do you want me to say much I've lost at the minute? So leave it, go yeah. for it. Yeah. <laughs> as at right now, since the 10th of June last year, so it's just over nine months, um, I have lost 100 mom pounds. So I still have a bit more to go. <laughs> If you're not clapping at home when you're watching this video, like 101 pounds, that is amazing. Yeah. That's monumental. There are people who just don't even believe that. So I'm yeah. so proud so, of you. And it, to be honest, it's been easy. It's been relatively easy. Um, I have basically been totally sugar-free, apart from I allowed myself a few treats over Christmas, but I actually deliberately thought, yeah, I, can, I deserve a treat. But I just got straight back on it again. So 101 pounds as of now. And I'm keeping at it. I've still got more to do, so I won't be stopping here. So what, what was it that got you started? You know, was there, and I know, I know for me, when I, when I went on this journey, I, I had to kind of corral a whole bunch of reasons why I made it about my son. I made it about my health, you know, wanting to look better, feel better, all that good stuff. But for some reason, like that wasn't enough for me to get started. I had to make it about something external. And for me, it was my son. Like I just yeah. said, he deserves better. I want to show up as a better role model. What, what was it that, that made you say, you know what, this time it's going to be different. This time I'm, I'm going the distance. Yeah, it was just being in Greece. I mean, as you know, the event there, there was a lot of activities happening. There was a lot of different things like yoga on the beach and going for the morning walks. And even just the resort itself was quite hilly. And I just wasn't coping with it. I just felt physically not able. And I was like, I'm missing out on a really exciting opportunity here by not being able, as well as being very self-conscious, you ride a pool and all the rest of it. And I just sort of thought, I am never going to feel like this again. I'm never going to miss out on things that I know are going to help me in my life and help my business and everything else. So it was just like, and plus for my health, I needed to do it because that, that really hit home, I suppose, the fact that, um, I wasn't able to partake and get involved in things the same. Um, so it was like, I have to make a change. And a bit like you saying, I've got two daughters and you know, I want to be here to see my grandchildren if that ever happens someday. So yeah, no, definitely. It was just, it was one of those moments. It was just like, 
never again am I going to feel like this. And it was just that real determination that this time it's different. It's like, mm-hmm. this is going to happen. And I know you said it was easy and we'll kind of get into kind of like what you did specifically. Cause I know people want to know how did you do it, but to talk a little bit about some of the obstacles that, that you faced. Like I'm sure as you started this, there were some obstacles that you had in your mind of like, like you, you maybe thought like for me, I, I'm like, Ooh, it's going to be hard for me to give up my ice cream. It's going to be hard for me to give up alcohol. There were obstacles that I had in my mind. And then once I got into it, turns out those weren't the things that were hard. It was other things that kind of showed up and popped up. So um, what were some of the obstacles that you were kind of looking at when you started that you know, made it hard to get started? And then as you know, you continue on the journey, other obstacles that pop up. Yeah, <laughs> to, be, to be honest, I actually, I was so focused and so determined. I didn't let any obstacles get in my way. Now, over the summer, we had a really good summer here. I know, I know probably where you are, you have good summers every year, but to get a good summer here, it's not wet. It's quite a, an unusual thing. I had a good summer last year. And there was lots, lots of barbecues and things like that. Um, so going to the likes of that, because you, you always associate barbecues with having a few weeks glass of wine or a couple of drinks or whatever. But I was just so determined. It was like, nope. I was sitting there with my water and my, you know, trusty purifier um so yeah no I, yeah occasionally the odd wee drink would have maybe thought like oh i could really i would love a glass of prosecco or a glass of champagne or a glass of something but didn't really it wasn't a serious threat it wasn't really a serious obstacle for me um, so i love that you say that my um my mom taught me she had this saying that she shared with me that uh, obst- obstacles are those things you see when you take your eye off the goal. And, yeah. and that's basically what you just said. Like you, you were so focused on your yeah. goal. The obstacles were there. I, I, yeah. prom- I promise you, they, they were there, but you either didn't see them or you chose not to see them because you had a vision yeah. of where you were going. I think that is such, it, such, a, such a key point. What was, was there like a certain moment, whether it was, you know, before you got started or kind of once you got into this a little bit where you had kind of a turning point or a breakthrough where you said, where something just really clicked for you or you felt like, wow, I'm in momentum now, or I feel like I got this, or you felt like you got, got over some of those initial hurdles and things just really, really started getting easier or more sustainable. In yeah, it. definitely. I think to be honest, going through the 3X program was the turning point for me because I actually thought previously I understood what I had to do and what I had to eat and why, but really I had no idea. So the education I got has been, to be honest, that, that's the bit that's been life-changing. That's the bit that's made the real difference to me. So whenever I'm looking at my food and what I'm eating, I'm not thinking, do I like that or not? Or what is it? I'm thinking, have I got protein? Have I got healthy fats? And have I got loads of vegetables and stuff to get my carb, my healthy carbs that way? Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking of what it consists of. And, you know, the healthy fats bit was a big change for me because we are brainwashed to think all fats are bad for you. So actually turning that around and actually making sure I'm getting healthy fats was a big, big change. And I think that's made a big difference, actually. I think that's helped my weight loss. Like so the, you know, our fish oils, I'm, I'm taking double the dose of that to help my healthy fats as well. And obviously that helps the inflammation in your gut and stuff. So yeah, just by knowing why you're doing something. I'm one of these people I have to understand what I'm doing. I don't react well to someone telling me to do something just for the sake of doing it. I have to understand well, why I'm doing it, what impact will it have. So the, the program laid out not just what to do, not just how to do it, but it explained why it all works. Yep, and it was the why that really made a difference for me, understanding it. And are you, um, are you measuring out your food or the weighing it on scales? Are you doing any of that? What about, are you counting calories? No. Nope. So some people are going to say, you have to count calories. And the only way to lose weight is to, is to reduce the number of calories you take. Did you, I mean, have you got some thoughts on that? Or did you pick, because I mean, caloric deficit is, I think, one of probably the most misunderstood concepts. Yeah. Um, but let me know kind of what, what's been your, like, what did you used to think? And what do you think about that now? See, I used to count calories. I have my fitness pal, fitness pal, and I would have been putting in everything I had and sort of working towards maybe twelve hundred and fifty calories or something like that. 
But when I started and I really understood it, um, and obviously Laura goes through how, you know, was it 500 calories you have to reduce to lose a pound in a week? And it's like, to lose two pounds in a week, you'd have to be having a death or reducing it by 1,000 calories. You're beating nothing. Um, so actually understanding what your body needs to function and the fact you do need your protein, your healthy fats, and your, your healthy carbs. Um, I haven't counted calories in the whole time I've been doing this. Mm -hmm. And the thing, the thing that I didn't, I didn't quite, I didn't realize it the first time as I was going through the education modules, but I'm, I'm in a lot of these Facebook groups online where these weight loss groups and people are always talking about keto this and intermittent fasting and counting calories and doing HIIT training, all this different stuff that works. Okay. Like I'm, you know, any, any diet works, it's question, you know, is it sustainable for you? Right. And yeah. is it the most healthy thing for you? Same thing with exercise. If you, What's the best diet? The one you'll follow. What's the best workout plan? Yeah. The one you'll actually do yeah. consistently. Uh, but as a as a forty six year old, you know, former athlete with bad knees who wants to you know be stay active, like I can't. I don't want to be doing CrossFit six days a week. You know, I want you know something that and that was what was really appealing to me is that they told me I didn't have to work out like crazy. I just had to do yeah. basic walks every day. But what I've come to really understand when it comes to calories and caloric deficit is that there's three different ways to get yourself into caloric deficit. And you do need to get yourself into caloric deficit to lose weight. One is the way that you just kind of discussed. And that's, I think, where, where a lot of people think it kind of starts and ends is, oh, you just need to reduce the number of calories you eat. And a calorie of protein is the same as a car calorie of fat or a carb or a diet soda or a dessert. No, no, it's, yeah. I mean... It's there, there's there's other ramifications beyond just uh, the, the calories that go in, but um, so that's I, I personally just do not think that is the best strategy to continue to reduce and reduce your your no. caloric intake because you're going to slow down your metabolism and you know you, you, like you said you're not going to have enough um, uh, nutrients for your for your body yeah. to function at its optimal le levels. The the second way that you can um, get into a caloric deficit is to exercise, you know, to move more. So that's part of it too, but you don't have to do hours and hours of steady yeah. cardio. You just have to get up and do some movement. So I'd, I'd love to ask you a little bit about that too, like what your exercise has been like, you know, and how you've tracked that. Um, but the third way you can get into a caloric <laughs> deficit is beyond just um, reducing the caloric intake, um, exercising is the types of foods you eat. And as you've kind of come to yeah. experience and see firsthand, by eating fats, you know, these dietary fats, these foods high in fat, it takes more calories for your body to actually process it. So, so you don't have to like re reduce the amount of food you're eating. You have to change up the types of food you're eating. And by getting these good healthy yeah. fats in, it's, it's, it's like almost not even fair that it works so well. But yeah. here's, here's the trick. Like you have to, you have to let yourself detox and, you know, for most people, it's anywhere between four or five, maybe seven days to, to go through that detox, to get off the carbs, to get off the sugars. And then you got to give yourself probably a full month of, you know, eating super clean, lots of veggies, moderate protein, high fats, and your body's going to get fat adapted. So now your body is going to take that fat and burn it as fuel. And, and then after you've been good for 30 days, you can get away. You can get away with some cheats here and there. Right, you can do a little bit of fasting. Like you know, you're going to go to an event. You can fast for a little bit. You can, you know, get a little extra exercise in that day. Make sure you're 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 scaling up on you know your water. Make sure you get plenty of sleep. Like don't cut yeah. corners. If you know your diet's going to be a little bit off, make sure all the other things you're you're, you're good. for, and you can get away with it. You can practice a little bit of moderation. But um, I just I just feel bad for for folks who don't who don't have this information and think that oh I just have to cut out all the stuff I like and reduce my calories. And that's the only way I'm going to lose weight. And it's, it yeah, some of the, hard. some of the diet programs, you know, you hear people talking about certainly locally here mm -hmm. actually, actually makes me cross because yeah. you hear them, you know, saying that they can have their cheats and all the rest of it. And they don't really realize they're, they're stopping their fat burning. And to be honest, a lot of the weight they're losing is probably muscle mass as opposed to actually burning fat. Mm -hmm. And I think understanding all of that has made a huge difference to me because um, it's just like I've become, near, <laughs> become a real bore probably now in terms of 
you know, preaching at people in terms of, you know, what they should be eating. And like, so some, there's one of the local slimming groups here will say, you're not allowed to eat avocados because they're too high in fat. And I'm like, they're so good for you. That's healthy fat. And it's like, and it's just like, wake up and get real, you know? So yeah, things like that make me cross that there, people are being fed so much misinformation. They don't really understand. And I think that I'll say, it goes back to that. That's what made the difference for me is actually understanding the, the real way of it to the truth of it. So, so you lost 101 pounds. That is like so, monumental. And so uh, far, so far. What more so, do? um, what is, do you have a, do you have another, um, another deadline or a time frame to, to hit your, to hit your next goal or how are you, how are you attacking this? I would like by the end of this year to have lost another hundred points. So that's what I'm aiming for. So I've got another, what, nine months to do another hundred. Now that this, I would imagine this hundred is going to be a bit slower. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah. Because the very first week I lost something like 16 pounds in the first week. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, a lot of that's water weight, toxins, things like that. Um, you know what you you know what you're doing now. Yeah, totally. Oh, absolutely. It's easy. It's, so what's a day? What's a day like? So take take folks kind of through. Um, I like to, I like to kind of keep it simple with 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 clients. We have five daily disciplines we talk about, and this is all the same stuff I learned in the three X program from Laura and Tim. It's um, Perfectly balanced meals, uh, moderate exercise, optimal hydration, supplemental nutrition, and then adequate rest. So um, yep. let's let's talk about let's talk about meals. What what's what was your meal plan been like? To be honest, I've sort of stuck I've stuck totally to the perfect day. Um, so in the morning, I'd get up, I'd have my um, green juice, moa, my supplements. I my breakfast would usually consist of turkey bacon, maybe some mushrooms eggs made and make it into an omelet or something with some spinach so i'm getting healthy fats protein some cut you know vegetables and stuff in um i can go easily five hours now that's the way i try to work it i try to work five hours in between meals with no snacks so it's like breakfast then five hours later lunch five hours later dinner no snacks in between and nothing mm-hmm. after dinner at all um so lunch would be maybe a bit of you know a, a salad with maybe chicken or something like that and then dinner would be whatever meat I'm having or protein I'm having with a whole load of maybe vegetables or a salad whatever so it's pretty straightforward I would use some of the recipes but a lot of the time I just stick to you know the basics my wife and I were talking about this last night like my meal plan is boring by a lot of people's standards but I asked my wife last night I'm like I'm like honey have you gotten bored with it because she's eating all the same stuff she's like she's like no like it tastes good like there's enough variety there's just a handful of dishes that um, handful of dishes that I that I prep. I use the same seasonings, the same techniques, it's the same salad. Um, but it just it really we do slight variations, but it just really hasn't gotten old. Like you said something earlier, like you don't look at food now in terms of ooh, how is this going to taste? How is this going to make me feel? You look at is this what I need? Yeah, and that that's a breakthrough right there. Is to be is yeah. to look at food not just for how it's going to taste or how it's going to make you feel, but to look at food as information because that's all it is. It's information yeah. that's going to tell your body how to respond. It's going to tell your body what, what hormones to, um, to trigger. trigger. Do you know something? Your, your taste buds change. Like I like, you know, always did like salads and vegetables, but they just taste different. You know, you get more of a, a buzz from it. Now. <laughs> you know, it's like you enjoy them more. Um, so you definitely your taste buds change. So that's a meal plan. Um, let's talk about exercise. You were kind of you were kind of uh, wincing when I mentioned exercise. What, what's, what's that all about? I have I have a total um, confession to make here. I have lost that 101 pounds without doing much exercise at all. That's the one area, and that's the bit I have to change for the next 100. Okay, that's my sort of my challenge area. Um, between being busy and all the rest of it, I just need to get up earlier and do it. Um, and stop making excuses about it. But I literally. I have done very little exercise. Do you enjoy exercise or are you like, do you have like an aversion? Is it just not fun or does it, does it hurt? I just, I just, I'm always busy and it's a, yeah. that's my excuse and it's not a proper excuse. I just need to get up an hour earlier or something like that and, and do it. But to me, that's the bit that I really do need to pick up now. Um, I need to start toning more and the exercise I think is going to help, you know, 
So I'm probably plateauing a wee bit at the minute. So it's just, I think that's what mm-hmm. it needs to sort of kick me into the next, next stage. You know what, I think it's great though. I think it's such a, um, it's such a powerful testimonial that you were able to do this without exercise. Um, you know what I mean? And, and, and I'm, I'm excited for you because it's like, you've got the diet wired. And a lot of times, like in, in my past, my, my broken record story was I would get out of shape and then I would try and do everything all at once. I'm like, I'm going to drink more water. I'm going to eat better. Um, I'm going to go to the grocery store, get all the good stuff. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to work out five, six days a week. And it would work for about a week or two. Yeah. And then I would get hurt. Like I would twist my ankle or I would torque my shoulder or my knee. I would do something. Um, and I'd be eating more and I'd be justifying eating more because I'm working out more. And then I would have those days where ugh, my, my ankle hurts. So I'm not going to do the, I'm not going to do my cardio today. I'm just going to push around these weights a little bit. Right. And it, it was a vicious cycle. Cause by like the third or fourth week, I would be like justifying like cheating and eating different stuff. And it just, it was just, and I would just get frustrated and I didn't understand. I had no idea. Yeah. Um, what was going on. And I thought that the way to lose weight was just to work out, work out. Yeah. And See, I, I was, the, I was the same. You know, I'm a driving instructor during the day and, um, I always blame my weight gain because it did balloon whenever I sort of started becoming a driving instructor. And I always blamed it from sitting in the car all day, not, you know, literally walking from one side of the car to the other. But I've been able to lose the weight by doing the same thing. So it was never the exercise that was the issue. It was what I was eating, when I was eating, um, and the types of food, obviously, that was, so it's, it's 80% about the food. But they say my next challenge is the exercise. That's my next So challenge. have you got a plan for the types of exercises you want to do? I just want to do walking at the minute. I'm not being over, I'm not, put, you know. That's if I can get out and do mm-hmm. even, I mean, you, you saw me back in June last year. I wasn't physically capable of doing exercise, to be honest. My back would have been sore, my knees sore, you know, a lot of joint pain. Um, so, you know, to even get the stage where I am enjoying walking and I can do a 10 or 15 minute walk without any pain, I mean, that's a major breakthrough. That's something that so many people take for granted. But whenever you're carrying a lot of extra weight, that you, you know, you can't necessarily always do that. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things that hit me hard last year in June and Greece was the fact that I physically wasn't able to participate, you know, so that, that was a big driver. So, yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm excited because I know that just adding that in, just as simple as a morning walk is going yeah. to, I think, really, really help. Yeah. Um, water. Let's talk about water. I saw you got, you got our favorite water bottle over there. Yeah, um, absolutely. How, how much water do you drink a day? I have a water app reminder and I drink, I try to drink four liters a day. So that's, that's my, my target. So it is a wee bit awkward being a driving instructor and being in the car all day because you sort of have to build in uh, bathroom breaks, um, which isn't always possible. So, but yeah, I try to do, I do a liter in the morning. So the way I work it usually is I have my detox in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I take it and this up to bed with me. So I will take this as well. So between the two, I'm getting the guts of a leader before I even start in the morning. I will have um, my, um, like a cup of tea I make with um, my giving greens and lemon juice and apple cider vinegar and stuff like that. So I make like a, a tea up. So that's another roughly, say, half liter because you usually take a couple of cups of that. So that's one and a half liters before I start, really and then breakfast and then I try to get a liter ideally between breakfast and lunch and then another liter roughly between lunch and dinner so it doesn't always work out exactly like that but that's the way I plan try to plan it but your body responds well to to getting the water in earlier in the day yeah I, yes. I found the same thing I found that if I like if I get behind on my water I feel like I'm chasing it and like my and, yeah. and I feel off if I can stay really hydrated early in the day my, I just, I have so much more energy. I'm not as hungry. I have more mental focus. It's, uh, yeah, definitely. Crazy. Yeah. All definitely. right. So you got the water. So you talked about the diet. You talked about the exercise. Uh, we talked about the water. Um, how much sleep do you get? It can vary. Again, this is something probably because I'm coming home and then trying to do work with the business and stuff like that as well. So I try to get seven to eight hours 
Okay. So, uh, eight. That's good. I, I mean, that's good. I mean, eight's the magic number. Nine is like ideal, but for most people, it's like, who's got time to get nine hours of sleep? You know? yeah. On a Sunday morning, maybe over the right. weekend, possibly. But. Busy lifestyle, you catch up a little bit. Um, but have you, I mean, have you noticed the difference in like on, on tracking your sleep? Have you noticed like that you're, you're getting, um, especially when you're doing your initial detox, did that, did that seem to help by focusing on getting more sleep? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I use, um, obviously the drops I find really help. Um, mm -hmm. and I mean, they help massively with the whole diet side of things as well. Um, and then the detox and I also use our, um, cam oil as well to help mm -hmm. with sleep as well. So that was the next thing I was going to ask you. And you've kind of talked about some of the, the supplemental nutrition for folks who maybe aren't, aren't familiar with it. I'll just kind of put it in some, some categories. Like I, I've been taking vitamins and minerals for the last 15 years. Um, uh, I upgraded about a year and a half ago when, uh, when I get, when I got turned on to, to the stuff that our company has. Um, but you're, you're taking like basic, uh, uh, the, the optimal nutrition, right? The vitamins and the minerals, is that the basic stuff? And then I heard you say you're taking not just the recommended dose um, for the omegas, the fatty acids, but you're actually doubling up on that. Can you talk about yeah. why again? Because I, I think this is really important when it comes to like inflammation. I don't think people always realize this. Yeah, um, I mean, I suppose just whenever you're going through the modules and, and certainly for the women's program, Laura explains why you need to get your, your healthy fats and stuff. And most people are deficient in it, especially the omega-3s. We tend to have an awful lot of omega-6s in the body. So omega-6 is inflammatory, omega-3 is anti-inflammatory. Um, and we tend to have a balance more towards the omega-6. So um, I know they recommend in the program to double up your omega, um, omega-3s. So yeah, obviously with, um, the inflammation in your gut can stop your nutrient absorption. So by having... Mm -hmm helping to sort that out you're actually absorbing more nutrients you're helping your metabolism because your body needs what is it 40 essential vitamins and minerals every day so exactly. if you're not if you're not absorbing it um and the the whole omega thing helps to with the absorption helps with the inflammation so yeah it's a new brain to me and guys it's not just for women okay for for men too we also yeah. suffer from inflammation and I, I mean the way you want to think about inflammation it, it's a result of oxidative stress. You basically, ha you basically have all these free radicals bouncing all over the place inside your body. And the effect they have is they're rusting your body from the inside out. And it makes you look older than you should. It makes you gain weight. It makes your joints hurt. It has all kinds of like negative effects. Um, that's yeah. the bad news. The good news is you can do something about it. And you know, it's as simple as eliminating certain things from your food, increasing your water, um, adding things like these omegas. Um, and, you know, I mean, eating lots of fish, you know, where you get like the natural fish oils is great. Uh, but I find most of us, it's hard to get enough, uh, particularly yeah. when we're like out of balance. So that's why doing a double dose of like these omegas is, uh, is yeah. great. Um, you also mentioned um, uh, a detox powder. Um, are you taking that in this detox powder? It's got things like chlorella. There's zeolite in there, these, these microgreens that basically clean out your blood uh, at a cellular level. W what's the timing on that? Are you taking that first thing in the morning or at night? Or? So, so as I get up, first thing in the morning. Okay. Yeah, so I take it, leave it about half an hour to an hour, and then I take the other half liter or so of water mm -hmm. while I'm getting showered. And so I take it first thing, get myself all organized. And then by the time I get downstairs, I've had it, I've had another half liter of water. So that's me sort of well hydrated. And how's it taste? Does it taste like anything or? It's fine. I mean, a lot of people know sort of maybe say about the taste of it, but I, I, it I looks kind of, it looks, it. Kinda it looks worse than it is. Yeah. And it doesn't mix up real great. And it, it doesn't really like look like much or taste like much, but like to me, like the taste is fine. There's like, it's fine. Absolutely fine. Like, I would sometimes maybe put squeeze a wee bit of lemon juice into it, but, but I do it in like a, a shaker bottle and just give it a good shake and uh -huh. it mixes up fine. Yeah. It's sometimes harder if you stir it in a glass, but no, it's brilliant stuff. Absolutely brilliant stuff. And then you mentioned um, green. Now, are you, are you doing your, you're having a green juice for breakfast. Are you doing that? Are you, are you getting like fresh produce and running it through the juicer or in a blender or what have you? It depends. I'm, I'm, che I'm cheating a bit at the minute. <laughs> so with getting up early and stuff and going to work, 
I was doing the whole juicing thing, but I would have juiced maybe three days in the go and just kept mm. it in the fridge with some apple cider vinegar in it. But what I'm doing now is using the Giving Greens instead. I tell you, I'm, I'm right there with you. For over a year, I was, I, was, I was consistently doing juice at least six days a week. You know, like I would usually, I, when I would go to the grocery store, I would get eight, I had eight boxes to keep all my produce in. So I would do like eight days at a time. And then sometimes I would miss a day depending on when I got mm -hmm. to the grocery store. But I would say in general, in, in that first year, I probably juiced like 350 times in that yeah. first year. Like I didn't, I didn't miss many days at all. And it just became part of my ritual. And yeah, did it take some work to go shopping to get the organic produce, yeah. wash it and clean it and prep it and chop it up, run it through the juicer, experiment, make it taste good, clean the juicer, put it away and do it all over again the next day. Right. So yeah. some people, some people just are not up for that. Okay. I became absolutely obsessed with it because of the results. I mean, I lost 30 yeah. pounds. It is good. Yeah. yeah. And it just, I just, I'm like, I'm going to stick with this and I just love the way it tastes. But then the company, they had us try this stuff back in October and uh, they teased us. I only had like, I only had like a, because um, my wife started taking two, so I only had a couple weeks supply of it. Uh, and then, then I ran out and then they like, then we were able to get more. Um, so basically since the beginning of this year, I've been, I've been doing the same thing with the giving grains. Yeah, my, it's my brilliant. Juicer, Absolutely my brilliant. Bad. My juicer is sitting on my kitchen counter collecting dust. Yeah. Um, and I'll still do it once in a while just because I enjoy, I enjoy the process, the, kind of the ritual, and it tastes so good. Sometimes I'll even mix the giving greens in there for a little extra kick, but you can't beat it for like no. the time that you save of shopping, doing the meal prep, and it's cheaper. Like it's yeah. actually cheaper yeah. going to shop totally. with that. So for, if, you're, if you're thinking about doing, you know, if you're thinking about embarking on healthy lifestyle, making some changes, and you know you got to you know you got to get more vegetables. You know, and the easiest way to do it is to drink them. Um, and if you don't, I mean, a juicer can cost a couple hundred bucks to go buy that brand yeah. new, plus the time of doing all the veggies. This Giving Greens uh, drink is something um, you really ought to look in. And, and uh, Leo can get you details on that. I can get you details on that. It's uh, it's easy. Um, you mentioned another product that uh, I'm a big fan of too, called Moa. What is what is what is Moa? Oh, What's that I all? About? Favorites, I get all excited. Mother of all. So Moa has 36 superfoods in it and it is jam packed. You said earlier on about your free radicals, it's jam packed with antioxidants. But why I love it so much is it's also got so many anti inflammatory properties in it as well. So for my joints and everything, I notice a huge difference by taking Moa. Um, and it's like I'm, as I said, I'm a driving instructor. I sit beside people all day long over the winter who are sneezing and coughing and spluttering about the place. And they and always have, have hand sanitizer, right? And they're always like covering their mouth when they see Yeah, it. and that they're put it all over my steering wheel. And yeah. I have not had a cold in three years. That's amazing. So it's a fantastic product. Yeah, I love it. I, um, and you were talking about your taste buds, how your taste buds changed. I tried Moa right when I got started. Um, and I, I hated it. I did not like the taste of it. I'm like, this tastes like it's good for me. And I, but I was addicted to sugar. I was addicted to carbs. Uh, this was very um, different then. So I tried it, and then I told, I told, I told our friend Steve. I'm like, Steve, I don't know about this Moa. He's like, dude, just try it again. I tried it again a few days later. I'm like, no, man, it's it's no good. He's like, he's like, he's like, put it on the shelf, wait a couple of weeks, and then try it. I'm like, all right, but I think I'm gonna return this stuff. Like, I think you sold me some stuff. <laughs> Um, I tried it a couple weeks later. I'd gone through the detox. My body was starting to crave vegetables. My taste buds were changing. I'm like, huh, this is pretty good. different. Now I'm like, now I love this stuff. I take it every, yeah. I take it pretty much at least one every single day. If I'm traveling, if I'm going to be on airplanes with, you know, people who don't cover their mouth when they cough or sneeze yeah. or washing their hands, uh, I usually take two a day. Just because it's such a convenient on-the-go snack, there's nothing synthetic in there. It's got all natural preservatives. It tastes yeah. great, like you said. It's got 36 different superfoods in there. It's, I mean, it's a brilliant, it's brilliant awesome. product. Yeah, it's a, yeah. it's the it's the best possible snack you could um, you could possibly have. Um, and then, are you doing the sh shakes too? Any of those shakes or? 
Uh, I do. Um, I use them as a backup, to be honest, yeah. more than anything. Um, I would take the Power Boost um, pretty regularly and I would use it for if I needed a treat of some sort. Uh-huh. So I'd maybe make some Power Boost with some coconut oil, a bit of almond butter and make it into a bit of a dessert if I, need, if I felt I needed it. Um, and I would sometimes, if I was in a hurry in the morning, I'd maybe do a shake um, for breakfast, or if I didn't have, if I was disorganized, I would maybe take one with me for lunch or something like that. Um, but yeah, I do use them because the, the pure nourish is so good for the um, digestive, the pre and probiotics in it and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I love that the power boost is so good for your muscle uh, maintenance. I agree. When I when I run out of power boost, I'm like, oof. It's like, yeah. like how did how did I let this happen? I need to order extra because I. So the power boost is the chocolate flavor. Yeah. The nourish is the vanilla. You mix them together. It's like, I've, I've and, then, and then you can throw your giving greens into it as well. Yeah, I do. Yeah, exactly. Um, so. I've I've tried lots of different shakes from different companies. Stuff you can buy at the store, pre-mixed stuff, and you know, it's you want to get stuff that that's not loaded with sugar, stuff that's bad for you. You want it, you want it to actually taste good. You want it to actually give you energy and not weigh you down. You want something that mixes up easily in, in a shaker bottle or yeah. in a glass. And this just, I mean, it gets high marks. Tick, tick, tick. Across. Yeah. yeah. It, tick, it does tick all the boxes. The, um, the, the, the power boost of the cocoa, I actually put that in my coffee. Yeah. So I, ma- I make yeah. really strong coffee. I put a scoop of the power boost in there, which has got amino acids in there, just a couple of grams of sugar. Uh, but it, it it does wonders for the taste. But then I I do kind of a version of bulletproof coffee where I put the uh, the, the clarified butter, the ghee, some of the MCT oil yeah. or the brain octane oil from Bulletproof brand, which is the um, multi chain triglycerides. Yeah, basically these exogenous ketones that help you get into ketosis, give you mental focus. So by the and I put a little pink Himalayan sea salt in there to keep your minerals up and some cinnamon. So. By the time I have a cup of this coffee, it is, it's muscle burning or it's muscle building. It's fat burning, mental focus. It tastes great. It's like, look Sets at you up for the day. Uh, yeah. It's like, I'm highly caffeinated. I'm like ready to go. Um, and if I, and it's like your, your meal plan, you're still doing three meals a day. And that's what I recommend. That's what I really recommend for everybody when they get started three meals and maybe a snack or two in between there. If you're taking like the Moa or the shake, I think those are the perfect snacks. Um, but one of the things that I started implementing and I kind of keep in my back pocket for folks who feel like they're starting to get to a plateau to kind of break through the plateaus or if they want to kind of go to the next level or kind of even do maintenance is to incorporate some fasting. And I don't know if that's something yeah. that you've experimented with or not. Or looked I have, into. yeah, I have I've sort of a few mornings, maybe I've maybe, um, skipped the breakfast and left it till later in the day and just mm-hmm. gone for the two meals, sort of closing down the window. Um, and just sort of try to still get, you know, a decent amount of food in, in terms of that. But sometimes I would have maybe a shake with that, you know, so you're, you're keeping your, your protein levels up and stuff. But yeah, I have tried that as well. And to be honest now, I can cope with that. Whereas maybe at the start, I think just going for the three meals a day at the start, we're trying to space it five hours in between really worked for me. Mm-hmm. But then I can now go longer, you know, I could, you know, have my tea at seven o'clock at night and not have anything to 12 o'clock the next day and be totally fine with that. And there's all kinds of benefits. There's all kinds of um, benefits of, of doing a fast. Now you need to be careful when you do it. We're not going to get deep into how to do a fast on, on, in, the, in this interview here. Um, uh, but I definitely suggest you, uh, you keep it in your hip pocket. It's definitely a tool that you can use. Uh, you want to keep your water up though. Uh, I still yeah. take my vitamins and stuff when, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm doing a fast. Uh, the longest I've done uh, intentionally is uh, 37 hours. But here's the thing. During those 37 hours, I worked out three times. Like I was doing exercise. And, and what fascinated me is I did not get hungry. Uh, there were a couple of times when I felt I should eat something and I just powered through it. And like half an hour later, I was fine. At the 37 hour mark, I finally just got to the point where I'm like, I should probably eat something. Yeah. I was not hungry. I was not famished. My body was like, you know, like I had like mental focus, like you would not believe. And, uh, you know, it got me, it got me, it got me fascinated in learning about things like autophagy and like how your body cells break down and it's going to be a subject for another interview. But, um, um, anyway, 
Uh, I could talk about that stuff all day. Um, <laughs> but your your achievement, like, and your and again, you, like this this is you're still in progress. And I'm, I'm so grateful for you to. Uh, I'm excited for you. I'm happy for you. Uh, but I really appreciate you um, sharing the progress updates because I know I know it's going to help people. I know there's people who are going to see this. People who no matter where they, where they're at they they just, not only do they feel, you know, defeated or maybe even disgusted with where they're at, they're just, they're just like, what's the point? Like, yeah, it they're, sort they're, of gets the stage where sometimes, yeah, what's sometimes that? just, you just sort of think either you don't know what to do for the best or you just sort of think, I just can't lose weight. You know, sometimes people just get to that stage where they just think, my metabolism so bad or my thyroid problem or whatever it happens to be mm -hmm. and I just sort of think it's just not possible for me but it is you know I've been trying to lose weight for 25 years since my last daughter was born and this is the first thing that has worked you know and worked dramatically um so yeah if it works for me it can work for anyone I love that so you achieved this weight loss. You've got more you want to do. And like, I have no doubt that that's going to happen. But talk a little bit about the, not just achieving this number, because that's cool and all, but talk about the transformation. Like, how is this show that, like, what's, what's different in your life? How, how are you different? Like, you know, who's, who's noticed? What are those, what are those milestones that uh, maybe you weren't really counting on, but it's been those nice little extra surprises, those extra benefits of, uh, of going yeah, I mean, the biggest change has been just fewer aches and pains, able to walk, not breathless, not sore, you know, standing, preparing dinner or something like that. Um, like a lot of people have noticed, like I was at an awards dinner before Christmas there and there was about 100 people at it and I hadn't seen them for, you know, several months and they were all sort of like, you know, and that's just lovely to get those sorts of compliments and like, oh my goodness, Lee, what have you been doing? You know, gosh, you look amazing. Um, so yeah, it's good and it gives you that motivation and whenever you see the progress, it gives you such a buzz, like you don't want to jeopardize it and I think that's what keeps you going. Whenever you're seeing such rapid changes and you... You know, you can see the figures and the scales going down. You can see, you know, like I still have this jacket that I'm on the minute, but it can go around me twice now sort of thing. And I don't want to go and buy new clothes at the minute because I'm like, I'm going to lose more. You know, we're just going to have to get rid of them again. So, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. you get a real buzz of that and that keeps you going, you know. Plus, there, it, plus it is easy. Are there people who have, have shared with you that your story has been the difference that's inspired them to get started. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really special, actually. I sort of, that make you, very, that you feel? I feel very honored that people, I'm very touched that people, you know, have inspired. Cause you just sort of think you're just doing it for yourself, but then you realize actually you are inspiring other people. Um, and that's sort of very special. Yeah. People are watching, people are paying attention. And, yeah. um, I'm, I made a prediction nine months ago that we were going to do this interview. I'm going to make it. <laughs> There are people, Leonora, who are watching this video right now who have been watching and they've wanted to reach out, um, but they've, something's held them back, right? Something, maybe they were scared. Maybe they, you know, they wanted to see if you were serious about this. You know, they're cheering for you, but they're secretly cheering for you to fail because then if you fail, it justifies their own failure. Like this whole fear of success, fear of failure, it's a weird thing. Um, you can't let that mess you up. But uh, mm -hmm. my next prediction is that uh, you are going to be, you're going to be overwhelmed with folks who want to know, how did you do it? Um, yeah. So just be ready for those phone calls. Be ready for those messages because you, you're making it look easy. And um, I, the that's, that's the there. thing. That's the, the thing that's are there, but you, you don't have to focus. You choose what to focus on. And Leo, yeah is giving you a blueprint of what to focus on, of yeah. why you want to do this, so. Yeah, and you sort of know now too that if you are feeling a wee bit, like you've got a wee bit of a craving or something like that, it probably just means you either didn't have enough protein or healthy fats in your last meal. So it's like, sort it. <laughs> you know? See, whenever you understand what's going on, it's not like you think, I've got a craving, I have to have this, that, or the other. You sort of understand, well, actually, I didn't have enough healthy fats in my last meal. I didn't have enough protein or whatever. And you said you were tracking this. You said you were using it. And are you writing it down? I, like I'm old school. I write everything here in my journal. 
Um, you, do you have like an app that you're using or how are you uh, keeping track of it? I'm using, just using the 3X app to be honest to track, but to be honest, I don't track that much. I probably should be doing the daily tracking, but um, I know that's what you're supposed to do, but um, because I know, I know exactly what the perfect day is and I know exactly what I'm doing. It's just like automatic now. Yeah. So, so I just on know days, I'm doing it. So you, it's funny you said, because you know, you know the things you're supposed to be doing every day. And you're pretty good pretty much every day. You're making progress. On the days or on the weeks when you measure your progress and you're like, ooh, I didn't lose as much as I thought, is there any anxiety around like, I don't understand why I didn't lose it? Or, or are you able to kind of make, connect the dots and know like, oh, yeah, because I did this? Are you able to kind of see the, the causal relationship? Yeah, definitely. And also, I mean, I try not to weigh myself too often because it's like scales do your head in. But I also know your body is going through so many changes that it may not always show immediately. And that, you know, your body's maybe adjusting to something or it's, you know, um, so it may not always show in the scales. It might be a delayed reaction or maybe, you're, you know, the time of the month, you've got extra fluid retention or something. So I don't worry about it. As long as I know I'm doing what I should be doing and I'm eating what I should be eating, then I know I'm doing the right thing. And I, but I just need to do is get the exercise sorted. And that I'm hoping will sort of really accelerate things again for me. That's huge. That's huge. The, um, I, I've always been really goal oriented and goal focused. Um, I guess about eight or nine years ago, I, I went and I'm, and I'm always trying to learn more about how to set goals, how to achieve your goals and what's the difference between people who achieve their goals and don't. And, um, weight loss and I, you know, weight loss was one of those things that like, I just, I just couldn't crack the code and I would set a goal to lose 30 pounds or to lose 50 pounds or to whatever. And the frame of that goal was disempowering me, you know, like the number on the scale wasn't what motivated me. So I like, I shifted it. Yeah. I want to lose the 50 pounds, but I know I had to figure out what's the pathway to achieve that weight loss or to lose a hundred pounds or 200 pounds or whatever the number is, it's to focus on those things that I, like, I, I don't know what the scale is going to say when I wake up tomorrow morning. Okay. There's a lot of factors, but I know that there's five things I can do every day. I can eat a perfectly balanced meal plan. Yeah. I can get a moderate amount of exercise. I don't have to overdo it, but I have to do something every single day. Yeah. I can drink um, uh, optimal hydration, get my, you know, yeah. my few liters in, right? I can take my supplemental nutrition to round up those gaps in my diet. And I can get adequate rest. And I know if I do those five things every day, I give myself five points. Okay. Yep. Five points times seven days. The max I can get is 35 points. If I, I not, and I will tell you, I've never gotten 35 points in a single week over the last 18 months, but I've never, I've never cheated on more than like two things on a given day. You know yep. what I mean? But I've always gotten at least three points a day. And I have so many clients who tell me kind of like you winced when I asked you about exercise. They're like, they're like, Hannibal, I feel bad. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing all the five daily disciplines. I'm only doing three or four. I'm like, are you still making progress? Are you still losing weight? They're like, yeah. I'm like, cool. Like, that's awesome. Yeah, like, absolutely. Like, like, don't beat yourself up over it. Like, enjoy your life and make this happen. The five daily disciplines are your, like, your roadmap. Um, so if you do feel that you're hitting a plateau, like, if you just go back to these five things, you can't fail. You're, yeah. I, it's virtually impossible to not continue making progress if you will yeah. track these things. Now, not everybody wants to invite that kind of accountability. And I, I teach everybody when you get started with the program, when you, when you come through the 3X, when you get started with the supplements, if you join our group coaching program, whatever, there's three levels of accountability. Number one is with yourself. Like write it down. Put the sticky notes on your mirror, yeah. on your fridge, in your car where like you're being honest with yourself. You have to let yourself know how bad did it get? Well, this is where I'm starting. This is where I wanna go. This is my plan to get there. Here's the things I'm gonna do every single day, right? And you write it down, you check it off. If you wanna use your app, if that helps, awesome. The second level of accountability is you gotta share it with another human being. You, they share it with you, they share it with me. You have an accountability partner, somebody yeah. who you're checking in with, if not every yeah. day, at least on a weekly basis. Like that alone, will skyrocket your results yeah. and then the third level of accountability and this is the one that i think just seals the deal is what did it for me is to make a public or a semi-public declaration so um 
I, I mean, I posted my topless pics on LinkedIn after I lost the first 30 pounds. And I knew I still had a ways to go, but I wanted, I, I invited the haters. I invited some people like, dude, put a shirt on, whatever. But it was enough to like keep me honest, to keep me going. Um, and now when folks get started, I invite them to post their pictures uh, in our private groups. They don't have to put it, they don't have to splash it all over social media if they don't want. Um, but within our group, our supportive group, uh, or, or if it's not our group, you get in another group. So some group are just for women, some are just for men. You find, there are plenty of groups. You find a group yeah. that, that works for you. Um, but I was always a lone ranger. I was like, I'm gonna lose weight. I'm not gonna tell anybody. I'm just gonna lose weight and I'm gonna show up and people are gonna be like, wow, you lost all this weight. The problem was it would get lonely on that yeah, road. That's and so nobody, easy to cop like, doesn't it? Whenever you don't nobody make else it was public. invested. Yeah, nobody else yeah. was invested in helping me out because I was trying to do it all myself. I was trying to be a tough guy. And what was different for me this time is I said, okay, maybe there's some things I don't know. Maybe my ego and my ignorance has gotten the best of me. How about I try things different because what I'm doing isn't working. And so I had, and, and that was a big step, okay? Like, cause women, if you're watching this, I know there's some women watching. Um, uh, I have what you call a, um, a Y chromosome cause I'm a guy and it, you know, I'm not able to admit when I'm wrong or when I don't know something, I will not <laughs> pull over and ask for directions, okay? I'm just not wired that way, it's not in my DNA. Um, so that was a big step for me. Um, but I'm so grateful and so glad that this information was shown to me that, you know, my friend Steve, you know, he, he, he got, he got through my skull. He's like, dude, just do this for 60 days. I'm like, all right, all right. And, uh, uh, thank you, Steve. I appreciate you. Um, thank you, Tim and Laura for, uh, for turning us yeah. on this information. It's great. Yeah, it's like, it's um, life changing. It is life changing. Definitely. So the, the last thing I'd love, I'd love for you to talk about Leonora, um, Advice for anybody who's new that's, that's maybe sitting on, the, sitting on the couch, sitting on the fence, they feel defeated, maybe they're depressed, they need a little bit of pep talk, they need a little bit of motivation. What would be your advice for somebody who is where you were nine months ago? Just do it. Just, you know, do the program, find out the information, get the education, understand what you're doing currently to your body by not having the proper nutrition and all the rest of it. Um, and get on the program and do it. It's easy. You'll, there's great community support. It's like, it's life changing. You know, if you value, you know, you've got to invest in yourself. And if you're, if you don't invest in yourself, you're not going to be around like you want to be for your son and, I want to be for my daughters and my grandchildren in the future. You know, it's like you've got to look after yourself. Your health is your wealth. So, yeah, what have you got to lose except the weight? I love it. I love it. Um, Leonora Curry, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from uh, the other side of the pond. I appreciate yeah. you so much. Uh, get back with Leo. Get back with me. We can, we can help you get started on this journey. It's worth it. You are worth it. It doesn't have definitely. to be as hard as you think. Um, if we can do this, you absolutely can too. We'll talk to you soon.